coming up in this episode, we are bringing to you one of the biggest music events from Copenhagen, the Copenhagen Jazz Festival. Hi, I'm Julie. And I'm Sabina, and welcome to episode 58 of MyDenmarkTV.com. of MyDamagTV.com is made possible by GoBookerTable.com, a popular online restaurant booking site that helps travelers and diners like you to quickly reserve a table online for free. So Sabina, we are right here in the middle of the Jazz Festival. Yes, Julie, and being a huge jazz fan, I am personally in heaven because there will be so many concerts. And you can catch them at regular venues, but you can also catch them at very alternative venues such as the newspaper Politiken, at museums and even at the zoo. And I know that really big names will be here like Diana Krall, Herbie Hancock, Kenny Barron and Davy Sanchez. But I do also know that some of the concerts are sold out so you really need to be fast if you want to catch a ticket for the big names. And the festival has been an inspirational factor in the Danish jazz environment. In fact, the Copenhagen Jazz Festival is considered as one of the most renowned festival in Europe. More than 200,000 people from Denmark and abroad will participate. In this episode, we will give you an appetizer for the festival. We are actually right now on Vofu Place, where the opening ceremony has just taken place. And back here in the background, the Swedish band called Our Job are playing what's called fusion jazz. We're going to go check that out. And a little later, we're going to take a peek inside the Latin side of jazz. So please stay tuned. So earlier today, I had a chance to talk with the organizer of the festival, so take a look. And now I'm joined by one of the project managers of the festival, Christian Degas. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So please tell us, what can the participants expect from the festival this year? Well, this year as the years, the 31 years that we've all been doing the festival, you can again expect a great variety of jazz music and music related to jazz yeah. and it's going to happen all over the city it's going to be in squares on parks at the small clubs at the big concert halls yeah. so that's what you can expect a, a total jazz experience yeah. Yeah. so if you are the first a first time of the you know visiting the, the festival with so many possibilities where would you suggest to start well to get an idea of what is happening and, and, and to catch the vibe of the festival, it's always a good idea to visit some of the outdoor free concerts because you get some of the best of the Danish jazz and also some of the Scandinavian jazz and jazz from other parts of, of the world. So what is it that have makes um, that has made the festival so successful considering that we have so many festivals around the world, not mentioned you know, in Denmark? First, I think we are as as the organization able to always renew and to rethink the festival. We always put in new themes during the festival, that is one part. Another part which is very, very important is that the festival itself produces like 200 concerts, but we have 1,000 concerts in the hall. And that means the clubs, the cafes, they produce concerts themselves. So they contribute to the festival's program. Can you mention just a couple of themes that you have? Well, we have different themes. Uh, one theme is called the, the Latin side of jazz, which takes place in Prasen at the Rollhusplassen. One theme is the 21st century jazz, which, uh, which is a club theme, with focusing on the new upcoming stars, like VJ Iyer, Fly, uh, to name just a few, and uh, it's going to happen in the Copenhagen Jazz House. And um, we have Jazz for Kids, so children playing jazz for children, yeah. grown up adults play jazz for, for kids. Yeah. It's going to happen in Östra uh, Anlæg, a park near the National Art Gallery. Thank you very much for your recommendation and be in here with us and tell us about the festival. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, guys, I think that was really interesting, the interview, especially the part about 1,000 concerts. I can't wait. But actually, as soon as these guys are done, the odd job, I am going to have an interview with them backstage. They're waiting for me in a little while. So I'm here backstage with our job and very much welcome to you Daniel and you Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you just finished your gig here. Yes. Um, how was it playing at the festival? It was nice. Yes, it was great. Great yeah. audience. It was nice weather. Nice weather. It's a little strange to play in the middle of the day sometimes but uh, the feel of the festival has already started. Has it always been jazz music for you guys? For me it has been, most time, yes. It started when I was like a teenager, 12, 13 years old, and it was the first time I was uh, introduced to jazz, and since then I've been listening to all kinds of music, mostly. Was that because this has something special, or what was the reason to, to do this festival? The, the reason to do this festival is, of course, that it's a, it's a really great festival that's been known for, for many years. It's a very good festival in, in uh, in Scandinavia. And Am I understanding you correctly saying that this is one of the really good jazz festivals in Scandinavia? In my opinion, yes, definitely. Okay. Mm. And what makes it so unique? I think the audience. Okay. Mm. That's my experience. Every time I've been here, it's, it's a really nice vibe. It's a really jazzy jazz festival, which most jazz festivals are not okay. nowadays. Any good advice on the festival or anything? Uh, Come to Copenhagen. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's true. It yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that was it from this opening ceremony. Um, next is the Latin side of jazz, which we are very excited about too. So please come with us. So here we are at Politikens Hus, bringing to you the Latin side of jazz. We're going to watch uh, Edma Castaneda from Colombia. He's a young, talented guy who became successful in no time. But before we go in, I would like to take a moment to tell you about GoBookAtable.com. If you would like to book a table at a restaurant of your choice, fast, free, and with instant confirmation, please take a look at GoBookAtable.com. So, should we go? Yeah, definitely. Great. guest here, Edmar Castaneda. We are very honored to have an exclusive interview with him. Very welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, um, we've been watching you and we see the passion that you have in your eyes and in your performance. Where does that come from? That comes from uh, God. That's the one that has given me the, the gift of playing this music and whatever I have on me. So my, my mission or what I want to do is to touch the heart of people with the love of God through the strings. You certainly did, I must <laughs> say. How long have you been playing? Yeah, I started when I was seven years old, uh, dancing folk music, Musica Llanera from Colombia, Venezuela, in Colombia, and then at 13 I started playing the harp. And what makes you combine the, the traditional music from Colombia with jazz? At 16 I moved to New York. That's when I met for the first time jazz. I'm like, wow, what is this? You know, so I was really uh, into that music, and I just I started with, when I was little with the folk music, and then I, from my 16th until now, just studying jazz, playing jazz. So I mixed both together, those two traditionals, with Latin American rhythms and world music. Yeah. And how do you find the Danish people? How, how do you feel about them? Uh, I, I had a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest. I. Some people told me like it was different, but it's still uh, different size what they told me. It's beautiful, great people, and a uh, beautiful day, beautiful town here. I love it. I wish I can stay more 
time here. Okay. And where are you touring in, in the world? Uh, this is the tour that we started in June. It's June and we started in Portugal. We went to Italy. Now I was in France. Now we're here. We go to Germany and Italy again and then we come back to New York. Okay. A little tour. Well, I mean, good luck on your tour and thank, thank you so you very much, much for joining us for the interview. It was lovely to watch us. Thank reflect. you very much and God bless you everybody. So, Julie, that was a wonderful concert. It was lovely. I enjoyed so much. I love getting all jazzed up. Yeah. Now, some practical information for you. If you want to find out more about the Jazz Festival, anything, the program, the prices, the different venues, you just go to the webpage jazz.dk. And that's it for this week. Just to remember, what you have seen on the show today is just one out of many things that Copenhagen has to offer. So if you would like to benefit from our guided tours around Copenhagen by bike or water and experience the best sights and sounds of Copenhagen, please click on the link below mydamactv.com Copenhagen tour. And in the upcoming episodes, we will be telling you much more about it. You can also benefit from one of our personalized one-on-one -on -one consultation with my Denmark TV team on any subject related to either living or working or visiting Denmark. All you need to do is click on the link that says consult with my Denmark TV team. And join us again next week where we'll be sharing with you lots more insights about Denmark. And don't be a secret agent, well, I mean a secret viewer. Share with us your comments or, you know, let other people know what you think. For example, do you like jazz? Have you ever been to a jazz festival before? We would love to hear from you. You can also join our online community at facebook.com slash TV or follow us on Twitter. We would love to get connected to you. So, thank you so much for watching and see you next Wednesday. Yes, bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Julie and I'm Sabina and welcome to episode 58 of My Denmark TV. Should I say that? Yes. <laughs>